On an aircraft carrier's flight deck, you see maybe 30 fighter jets parked between operations. F-A-18 Super Hornets lined along the deck edge. E-A-18G Growlers positioned near the catapults. E-2 Hawkeye surveillance aircraft with their distinctive rotating radar domes. But a U.S. carrier typically deploys with around 60 to 70 aircraft representing over $15 billion in taxpayer investment. Where are the other 40 aircraft? They're hidden two decks below the flight deck in a hangar bay most people don't know exists. This enclosed parking garage at sea stores more air power than most countries possess, and the engineering required to move billions in aircraft between decks reveals capabilities that make American carrier operations unreplicatable. Welcome to Flight Deck. Today we're exploring where aircraft carriers actually store their massive air wings and why the hangar deck represents some of the most sophisticated spatial engineering ever deployed at sea. The first question that comes to mind when you see carrier flight deck footage is simple. Where do all those aircraft go? Television coverage shows crowded flight decks during operations, but carriers operate continuously for months without returning to port. The jets can't simply stay exposed on deck during storms, maintenance, or combat operations. Yet the flight deck measures just 4.5 acres, roughly the size of three football fields. 60 to 70 aircraft don't fit in that space when you account for safe distances, blast zones, and operational requirements. The answer lies in a space that rarely appears in carrier footage because cameras aren't allowed there during most operations. The hangar deck sits two decks below the flight deck, occupying a massive enclosed footprint within the ship's armored hull. This space serves as the primary storage location for aircraft not actively flying missions. While the flight deck handles launches and recoveries, the hangar deck functions as a combination maintenance facility, parking garage, and protective storage for the majority of the air wing. The hangar deck ceiling height reaches 25 feet, just barely enough clearance for an F-A-18's vertical stabilizer. The space stretches 685 feet long and spans 110 feet wide. That creates enough enclosed aircraft parking to stow more than 60 aircraft plus engines and support gear. Sliding fire doors divide the space into zones for safety. The hangar deck serves multiple critical functions beyond simple storage. Maintenance crews perform scheduled inspections and repairs in this climate-controlled environment protected from salt spray and weather. Ordnance is assembled below decks and brought up via weapons elevators. Arming and de-arming operations happen in controlled spots on the flight deck under strict NATOPS procedures. The elevator system represents the most visible engineering solution to moving aircraft between decks. Nimitz-class carriers feature four deck-edge elevators, three on the starboard side and one on the port side. Each elevator platform measures 85 feet long and 52 feet wide. The platforms can handle 100,000 to 130,000 pounds of aircraft weight, enough for one large jet at a time with rapid cycle capability. The platforms are powerful platform elevators driven by hydraulic and electric machinery built for speed and precision at sea. Each elevator can complete the two-deck journey in rapid cycle times even when fully loaded. This speed matters critically during combat operations when aircraft need rapid repositioning between decks as missions change. The deck-edge positioning provides advantages beyond simply saving deck space. By mounting elevators on the ship's side, the Navy keeps the entire flight deck clear for simultaneous operations. Aircraft can launch from catapults while other jets land on arresting wires and still other aircraft move to elevator positions without interfering with each other. The elevator capacity determines operational tempo as much as catapult and arresting gear performance. During surge operations, carriers need to cycle aircraft rapidly between deck and hangar. The four elevators working with fast cycle times enable the sustained sortie rates that give carriers their strategic value. The spatial organization inside the hangar deck reveals engineering solutions to problems most people never consider. 
60 to 70 aircraft vary dramatically in size and shape. An F-A18 Super Hornet has a wingspan of 44.9 feet with wings extended. An E-2 Hawkeye spans 80.7 feet. An MH-60 helicopter measures 64.8 feet across its rotor blades. These dimensions create an impossible parking puzzle. The solution involves folding mechanisms that reduce aircraft dimensions by 30 to 50 percent. FA-18 wings fold upward hydraulically, reducing wingspan from 44.9 feet to just 31.6 feet. E-2 Hawkeye wings rotate backward along the fuselage, cutting the span from 80.7 feet down to around 30 feet. Helicopter blades fold and rotate, reducing rotor diameter by half. These folding systems aren't optional convenience features. They're mandatory engineering solutions that make carrier operations physically possible. The folding mechanisms must withstand tremendous forces while maintaining precision. FA-18 wings experience loads exceeding 7G during combat maneuvers. The folding hinges and locking mechanisms must handle these forces repeatedly without degradation. Each mechanism includes multiple redundant locks that prevent accidental deployment during deck operations. The parking patterns inside the hangar optimize every available inch of space. Aircraft park nose to tail in rows with minimal clearance. Wings overlap in calculated patterns where folded surfaces don't interfere. Helicopters fill gaps between fixed wing aircraft. The Navy employs specialized positioning crews who train for months learning the exact placement patterns that maximize density while maintaining safety clearances. The hangar deck also must accommodate rapid reconfiguration as the air wing composition changes. Different missions require different mixes of aircraft. The hangar arrangement must allow any aircraft to reach an elevator and ascend to the flight deck within minutes, regardless of how many other aircraft surround it. The coordination required to operate the hangar deck safely exceeds what most people imagine. Hundreds of deck personnel work across flight and hangar spaces moving aircraft, performing maintenance, loading weapons, and managing flight operations. The noise level makes verbal communication impossible. Personnel wear color-coded jerseys indicating their specific roles. Yellow for aircraft directors, blue for aircraft handlers, green for maintenance, red for ordnance, purple for fueling. The dangers of hangar operations dwarf the already significant risks on the flight deck. Aircraft packed together with minimal clearance. Jet engines run during pre-flight checks. Weapons and fuel create explosive hazards. One mistake can destroy hundreds of millions in equipment and kill dozens of personnel. The fire suppression systems reflect the catastrophic potential of fires aboard carriers. Multiple suppression systems provide overlapping coverage. Overhead sprinklers and high expansion foam systems, including legacy AFFF, now being replaced with safer agents. These systems exist because disasters like the 1967 USS Forrestal flight deck fire killed 134 sailors and taught hard lessons about fire safety aboard carriers. The organizational systems managing aircraft flow between hangar and deck represent logistics complexity matching any manufacturing operation. Every aircraft maintains a specific status, ready for flight, in maintenance, awaiting weapons, requiring fuel. When the air wing commander orders specific aircraft to launch, the deck crew must locate that exact aircraft in the hangar, move it to an elevator, bring it to the flight deck, and position it at a catapult all within 20 minutes. The strategic implications of this hidden hangar capability extend beyond simple aircraft storage. The ability to protect and maintain 60 to 70 aircraft at sea for months without port visits gives American carriers unique power projection capabilities. During the 1991 Gulf War, carriers in the Persian Gulf launched over 100 sorties daily for weeks. The aircraft flew missions, returned for weapons and fuel, then launched again hours later. This sustained tempo was possible only because the hangar deck provided protected space for rapid maintenance. 
The hangar deck also enables operational flexibility impossible with land-based aircraft. Carriers can reposition hundreds of miles overnight, changing their aircraft's strike radius dramatically. The air wing composition can change during deployment as different mission requirements emerge. This flexibility makes carriers floating air bases that redeploy their entire infrastructure in hours rather than the months required for traditional air base operations. The protective value of hangar storage became clear during numerous combat operations. Aircraft on exposed flight decks make tempting targets for enemy missiles. Moving 40 jets below deck removes them from harm while maintaining combat readiness. The hardened hangar deck provides armor protection that exposed flight deck parking cannot match. So where do aircraft carriers store 60 to 70 aircraft worth over $15 billion? In a hangar deck two decks below the visible flight operations, an enclosed space measuring 685 feet long and 110 feet wide. In folding wing mechanisms that reduce aircraft dimensions by 30 to 50%, enabling spatial density that looks impossible. In platform elevators that move over 100,000 pounds between decks with rapid cycle times. In coordination systems managing hundreds of personnel moving billion-dollar aircraft in enclosed spaces where mistakes mean catastrophic consequences. The hangar deck represents engineering philosophy that prioritizes capability over visibility. While the flight deck operations capture attention with dramatic catapult launches and arresting wire recoveries, the enclosed hangar two decks below enables those operations. Without protected storage, carriers couldn't maintain combat readiness for months at sea. Without rapid elevator systems, sustained sortie rates would be impossible. Without spatial optimization through folding mechanisms, the air wing wouldn't fit. What surprised you most about carrier aircraft storage? The hangar deck size, the elevator speed, or the folding wing mechanisms? Let me know in the comments. If you want more deep dives into naval aviation engineering and carrier operations, subscribe to Flight Deck. Until next time, remember that the most important capabilities often hide below the surface, invisible to casual observation, but essential for mission success.